All right, uh, we, we're going to be starting a new series this morning. Um, we've titled this, all through this month we'll be, we'll be exploring good health. Good health, good health, good health. Somebody is walking in full maximum health in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever may be going down in your health, we, by the power of God, we declare everything takes the turn for better. In the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to, 20 to 22, New Living Translation. Matthew 9, 20 to 22, New Living Translation. Just, just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Verse 22, then Jesus turned around. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. Someone came to this service with expectations already. And I declare by the authority in the name of Jesus, you are healed right now. Amen. Whatever the situation is, withdraw on the power of God over your health and we declare total healing Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And since Christ did it then, he can still do it again. And he is doing it again. Amen. Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 13, 8 scripture says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, if there are examples in the scripture of Christ doing it then, if there are recorded testimonies of Christ doing it then, he's still doing it again. And for someone, I declare your healing comes now in the mighty name of Jesus. That pain disappears now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody feels something now. And I declare that pain goes in the name of Jesus. That bleeding stops in the name of Jesus. That palpitation of heart stops in the name of Jesus. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. I declare by the power of God, whatever the name of the sickness is, it bows to the name of Jesus. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. I declare this morning, whether you are in this room or you are watching online, you are saved from that sickness. You are saved from that pain in the mighty name of Jesus. That muscle contraction stops now in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God rests upon your spine in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If there's ever any testimony of God healing someone, of God stepping into an impossible case, yours is the next one. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare by the power of God, fibroid shrinks. In the name of Jesus, weakness disappears. Someone, you just feel weak. You've done all the tests. No explanation. I declare the great physician touches you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Suffering ends in somebody's life. In the mighty name of Jesus. So this month we'll be exploring several instances where Christ said... Your faith has made you well. In the King James Version, it, 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 it reads, Thy faith had made thee whole. Wholeness is coming to someone. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, that statement establishes a strong connection between faith and miraculous improvement in our health. It says, Thy faith has made you whole. Of course, we must establish quickly uh, this thing about using faith like a magic wand. Uh, the essence of that statement is not faith in itself. The essence of that statement is faith in Christ. Amen. Because uh, your faith has made, made you whole 
can suggest that it is faith that healed the woman. But it is faith in Christ that did the job. It is faith in Christ that did the job. It is the confidence that you have in Christ and in his power to sustain your health, in his power to restore your health. That is what did the job. The power is not in faith. The power is in Christ. Faith is an instrument for activating the power of God. Amen. Because sometimes, you know, you, you hear some people talk so much about faith, and then you, you think faith is the whole thing in itself. Faith is not, the, is not an end in itself. Much so as some people talk about prayer so much that you think prayer is an end in itself. You can pray till now, till now to thy kingdom come. If the God that answers the prayer does not answer you, nothing will happen. Because you see some people, they say, ah, we prayed. Say, we prayed. And, then the, and, and they emphasize prayer like prayer is an end in itself. There is a God that answers the prayer. Amen. And so is faith as well. There is a God that honors faith. It is confidence in Christ and in Christ's ability. That's what faith is all about. Apostle Paul expressed it in 1 Corinthians 2 uh, from verse 4, verse 4, 4 and 5 in the New International Version. He says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on who? But on God's power. So this is not about oratory power. It is not about using big grammar. This is not about the pastor. It is not about, but it is about the God that is at the end activating your faith and releasing his power. Amen. It says, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom. And you know the way we humans are designed, you always believe in something. We are, we are faith machines. The way God designed us, we're a faith machine. Even when somebody says, I don't believe in God, that don't believe in God is a belief. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> so we are faith machines. God designed us to believe in something. So Apostle Paul is saying that, look, I don't want your faith to, to anchor on, on big grammar. I don't want your faith to anchor on, on me as a preacher. I want your faith to anchor on Jesus. Hebrews 12 says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. Psalm 20, verse 7, New International Version says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. So your trust must be in God. Your faith must anchor in on God. Because he is the one that has the capacity to bring about a turnaround. And somebody is experiencing turnaround this month. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Acts chapter 3, 6 to 7, New Living Translation. He says, but Peter said, remember the story of the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. Verse 6 says, but Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Get up and walk. Verse 7, then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Somebody is experiencing instant healing this, this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. What you have not been able to do by the reason of the power of God, this month your health gets better. Fully restored. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Siva and go, we don't have but in the name that is above every other name. And so I command once again, anything that does not represent God in your health, anything that does not represent God in your life, I command it, they bow now in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say resounding amen. amen. So you jump to verse 16 of that uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 16. He says, true faith in the... So the apostle uh, was explaining, giving an explanation afterward. He says, through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. He says, through faith in the name 
of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Somebody's story is changing <laughs> in the name of Jesus. He says, faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. So the power that does the healing is in God, not in faith. Faith is just a bridge. Faith is just an instrument that activates the power of God. It's an instrument for activating the power of God. Now remember, very important, uh, negative believing or the expectation that there will be no improvement can frustrate the power of God. Uh, negative believing, that's the opposite of faith. Negative believing and all the expectation that there will be no improvement can frustrate the power of God. So negative expectations, negative believing can frustrate the power of God. You, you, you look at some instances when Jesus, you know, was going to heal people uh, 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 in the scripture. He, he gets like, like one of the girls that he raised from the dead. When he got into the room, he ushered some people out, sent out the whalers, sent out the people that are peddling negative, negative, uh, 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 negative information, sent out the people that were crying. Why? Because faith cannot thrive in the presence of of negative expectation. Mark chapter 6, 2 to, to 6, New Living Translation. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They were asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Verse 3, then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Can you imagine? Even Jesus was amazed at some people's unbelief. <laughs> now, you, you read through that portion of the scripture, you, you see where he says he couldn't do any miracles. Not that he didn't want to, but he couldn't. Why? Because faith was absent. absent. There were no positive expectations of the power of God moving in, moving in. Their unbelief was an active resistance force. Now, you back up to verse 2. You see, scripture says, that they were amazed and they asked question, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? In verse 2. And then all of a sudden in verse 3, <laughs> they quickly changed and started mocking him. Why? Because negative, you know, it's, somebody just suddenly thought, ah, stop all this celebration of this guy now. Ah, we know where he came from. We know his story. Ah, his paternity is in doubt. I with somebody, the mom just showed up and said she was pregnant by who? By the Holy Spirit. And then, ah, <laughs> you too. You are now doing miracles. Say, ah, are his brothers and sisters not among us? What makes you different from us? As if you say they took offense. It is satanic interference. Amen. It is what? Satanic interference. Satan is actively engaged in preventing us from having faith in God. Actively. You see the story of the temptation in Luke chapter 4? The moment God spoke and Jesus was led into the wilderness, what happens? Satan showed up. Right after revelation landed, he showed up. I said, is it true that God said, and then he said, if you are the son of God, Satanic interference. Somebody is in this service and faith is rising in your heart. Faith is rising in your heart. And then a, a thought just drops. Say, ah, is it people like you that get healed? That is satanic interference. 
satanic interference. Sometimes some, some people, you know, in church, they are listening to message, and the only thing the devil brings to their attention are the blunders of the preacher. And, and the Holy Spirit is releasing revelation, releasing word that with bad faith, the only thing they are seeing is the light bulb that is dead. <laughs> Satanic <laughs> interference. Amen. Second Corinthians 4.3 to uh, 4, New Living Translation. It says, if the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So Satan actively seeks to prevent us from believing in God. Actively. That's when he sows doubt, as God said. Has it ever happened to someone around you? And then he begins to sow doubt. And the moment doubt comes, and then you begin to live in doubt, and then the efficacy of the revelation is removed. So, you notice how Satan sponsored sentimental nonsense to distract, to distract the people in Christ's hometown. What has what, what the... Is history got to do with receiving your own miracle? When there were testimonies of how people had been healed in other places, and then he came to his own hometown, and then the devil sponsored sentimental nonsense in their hearts. Amen. Uh, like, like, like for you know, like it happens to most of us. Say, so if somebody is able to help you, there's a, and then you look at the person and say, hey, my junior. <laughs> Sentimental nonsense. That's what Satan does. Sponsored something irrelevant in your heart just to stop you from activating your faith. So they were discussing his family, his childhood. Hey. But sorry, he's no longer the child that grew up in the neighborhood. Right. Amen. Something has changed. The power of God has activated something in him. And God has anointed him to bring about transformation in your lives. <laughs> Amen. He is the Christ, the son of the living God. Something had changed. That's why Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 5, know we no longer any man according to the flesh. <laughs> you know, See finish. See finish. And it happens to most of us. You, know, you, you hold people down in your heart with the picture of them that you have several years ago. Whereas they have changed, they have grown, they have moved on. You know, I had, I had a rude, you know, shock one day, you know. <laughs> Pastor, when Pastor Tola, when Pastor Tola was still with us, Pastor Tola said, it. you know, one of those days I wanted to call him and I saw what I used to save his name on my phone. Tola Campus. <laughs> then it just occurred to me. At, at that time, he had left school. He had married. He was married. He's married. I'd given back to two children. And I, still, I am still holding him down on my phone. Tola Campus. Check your phone. You will see wonders. <laughs> How many people you have <laughs> frozen in time? You always have a choice to focus on what God is saying or doing or to allow yourself to be distracted. You always have a choice to focus on what God is saying or doing or to allow yourself to be distracted. Listen to me. Regardless of however bad the situation is, God is there. God is there. However bad the situation is, Genesis chapter 1 it says, the whole place was in chaos, but the Spirit of God was there over it. And when God stepped into the sea, God said, let there be light. And the Spirit went into action. However bad the situation is, God is there. Amen. All you need to do is to focus, look, I mean, 
fine tune your lens to see God. Fine tune your lens to see God. Somebody, your eyes is your eyes are open this month. <laughs> To see God in the darkest of moments. In the mighty name of Jesus. So you must react to negative doubt building information. The way Christ re re responded to Peter's sentimental advice. You must react to negative doubt building information. And Jesus turned to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. That's how some, sometimes, you know, sometimes people are saying stuff around you and you are nodding. And you, you know the way your mind works? The mind is taking in the information and it will process it and it will give it back to you. So somebody is saying negative things, doubt, feeding you with doubtful information, information that will attack your faith. And then you keep nodding. You keep nodding. You keep nodding. And then the information sits and then gives back to children. You must react, amen, and get thee behind me, Satan. Now be careful how you say it and who you say it to, because they may interpret, misinterpret it that you are calling them the Satan, amen. So you must be careful. So you don't go and say, get thee behind me to your husband. <laughs> and the man now goes away and say, ah, you mean I am the devil? <laughs> Or you say it to your boss. <laughs> hey. So this month and beyond, you must be alert and maintain your spiritual steeds and composure. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Alert. <laughs> alert. <laughs> Nothing moves you. Amen. First Peter 5, 8, message transition. It says, keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. Any information that comes that is not in alignment with the word of God, you, you, you send it back to sender. Amen. There must be no shaking from the frequency of faith. So finally, as we wrap up, let's consider uh, a research question. How did the woman healed of the flow of blood come to believe in Christ's power? How did she come to believe in Christ's power to the point where she thought to herself, if only I can touch and I'll be made whole. How? Now, she heard of what Christ had been saying and doing. She heard, she heard the testimonies. She heard the testimonies of healings, of how people, blind men, got their sight back, how the lepers were healed. She heard Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So she heard and meditated over and over and over until a picture was created in her spirit. She saw herself healed. And that's when the miracle happens. That's when faith draws on the power of God that in spite of what your body is telling you, the only picture in your mind is a healthy you. That in spite of the situation around you, the only picture in your mind is the picture of victory. And it is just a matter of time. Your physical reality will catch up with your spiritual reality. Amen. So she saw herself healed and then she acted. She pressed through the crowd and touched him. Amen. So you must guard your heart. You must meditate on the word. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22 uh, I'll read the Passion Translation. It says, listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Verse 21 says, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Fill your thoughts with my words. So that's somebody's assignment this month. Fill your thoughts with the word of God until when anything happens around you, your first reaction is the word. What comes out of you is the word. That's when you, you activate faith in your heart. And that's when me, revelation gets birth in your heart. And the moment revelation is delivered to you, it's just a matter of time. Physical manifestation will follow. It says, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. So faith comes from hearing. That is, hearing the good news. So it's your turn. 
You focus on what God is saying and doing. Focus on what God is saying and doing. Whatever it is that maybe you go to the hospital and they say, ah, this is the result of your test. Focus on what God is saying and doing. Amen. Spend time meditating in God's word. Let the Holy Spirit drop a revelation in your heart. And once the revelation drops, what do you do? You act. Amen. When the revelation drops in the woman's heart, that if only I can touch the hem of his, of his garment. What did she do? She moved. She moved. So as the revelation drops, you must act. <clears throat> you must act. You must. This month will be your most healthy month ever. In the mighty name of Jesus. And beyond this month, you live in sound health. In the mighty name of Jesus. Someone, for the first time, you will experience a full month sickness free. A full month pain free. In the mighty name of Jesus. (laughs) And it will continue to be so. Someone this month is conceiving a miraculous baby. In the mighty name of Jesus. Someone's high blood pressure challenge is bowing in the name of Jesus. This month in the name of Jesus. Somebody's autoimmune disease is bowing to Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody this month you are experiencing miraculous joy. Miraculous peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Jeremiah 30, 17 to 19, New Living Translation. It says, I will give you back your health and heal your wound, says the Lord. I will give you back your health and heal your wound, says the Lord. And so I prophesy this month you are experiencing restoration. Restoration in your health. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is going down in your health, I declare by the power of God, (laughs) there is a total turnaround. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is high that needs to be low, we command it to go low. Whatever is low that needs to come high, we command it to come high. In the mighty name of Jesus, every hormonal imbalance comes to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody, your air is falling off. I prophesy by the power of God, restoration, restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, someone they've checked you over and over and over again, and they say there's nothing wrong with you, but you know there's something wrong with you. I prophesy by the power of God, the great physician arises over you with healing in his wings in the name of Jesus. Pain goes this month, weakness goes this month. In the mighty name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of God, somebody's blood is purified, supernaturally purified. In the name of Jesus, I declare somebody's genotype changes supernaturally in the name of Jesus. I say your genotype changes supernaturally. These are not testimonies that we have not seen before or heard of before. I declare it's your turn. In the mighty name of Jesus, for someone they've checked you, there is no reason why you should not conceive. But yet you have not conceived. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, just like it was announced to Mary, the glory of God will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. I declare in the name of Jesus, the glory of God comes upon you. The power of the Most High overshadows you and I command you in the name above every other name, conceive your babies. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. There will be joy and songs of thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. If you know God has touched you, if you know your transformation has started, will you give God some good praise this morning? (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Somebody is coming back rejoicing with testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I quickly pray for that person in this service? You know your lifestyle is not right with God. That is the starting point. Jesus has paid the price. Scripture says, by his stripes, we were healed. He has paid the price for your healing. The starting point is for you to be in a vital relationship with Christ. So you're that honest person, quickly put your hand on your heart. Whether you're in person or you're watching online, if your hand is on your heart, please say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner and I acknowledge that Christ paid for my sins. 
I ask that you forgive me. Come into my life as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' precious name. Let me pray for you, Father. Thank you for everyone that has said this prayer. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask that you move into their lives. Turn their, turn their lives around. Restore their health where it's failing. Let them experience your power tangibly this week in the name of Jesus. We thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Daystar, raising role models.